Good day and uh, welcome to another broadcast of Venture Capital Fund. Um, today we are going to be embarking on the, a continued journey looking at critical issues that are relevant to business. So in this program, we literally dive into issues relating to everything business and finance, really showing businesses unique, innovative approaches that they can use to create debt and uh, reduce their debt life cycle, reduce their debt costs and cash it on the equity much earlier. Today, we want to continue the journey, and that is looking at issues relating to your stay in power and the stay in power for business startup solution. So one of the reasons that we're going to be looking at this is largely because we're seeing businesses across the world fail every year for many reasons. We are looking at some of those reasons. We see that 20% of businesses that get started <clears throat> fail within the first year. And we see over 50% of businesses that get started fail within the first five years. And there are many reasons for that. Our operation, Venture Capital Fund, Venture Capital Inc, Global Branding and Marketing, we not only speak to those issues, but we provide strategic intervention that are literally designed to prevent businesses from going under. All right. Now, in the event that you're joining me for the first time, um, my name is Gary Thompson. I'm a business development consultant by profession. I'm a humanitarian by nature, and I'm the best-selling author for several books, including Manager's Toolkit and Billionaire Codes. These two books are already best-seller. I want to encourage you to log on to our sister company website, which is www.megamoneygy.com and scroll the front page you will also see you can purchase this book from anywhere in the world along with this you can subscribe to that website and you will get the daily business uploads that we are making to that site for free at the moment all right you can also find us on youtube venture capital fund i want to encourage you to like and subscribe those programs so again you will be the first to benefit from this program remember our content is pro-business, pro-private sector, and we're going to be giving you tremendous information to move your business to a whole other level. Now, yesterday, or in starting this program, I begin by saying that there is no instant gratification in doing business. Business has no instant gratification. And there's a reason why I say that. Because one, there's a turnaround time and to start generating profit. And we look at those reasons yesterday. You have to do your research. You have to do your developing your branded and marketing design. You have to implement those programs. And a whole of thing has to be done even before you open the door of your operation. So all of this contribute to the turnaround time of cash flowing your operation and really making a profit. So we looked at that. So the event you missed yesterday's program, I wanna encourage you to look back at that program. Today we wanna to look at a pretty interesting topic, which I'm gonna call step two in this whole exercise. And we're looking at the power to stay in business. And as such, we will be looking at business startup solution number two. The issue that I want us to look at today is what I'm going to call how to build your value proposition. And this is really ground zero, it's fundamental, uh, it's a critical part from your branding and you must never disregard this. I'm giving you essential information after being in business for over 25 years. Now, Knowing how to build your value proposition is important. So under this heading, we're gonna be looking at three important concepts to cover um, today's lesson. We'll be looking at one, um, how to identify your target audience. And I'll tell you why this is important. Two, we will be looking at um, identifying the, your specific target audience 
needs, wants, and expectations. And there's a special reason why we're going to be doing this. I'll go through this with you. Last but not least, we will be looking at how to align your value proposition to those needs, wants, and expectations. So before, at the end of this program, you will have all of this information to be able to apply to your organization, your business, instantly. And my wish is that all of this could be done before you get your business started. In our program, I often say, it is better to put the horse in front of the cart as against the cart in front of the horse. Um, these are some of the things that can really slow up and create unnecessary hiccup in your business. So let's get the ball rolling. Let's start by looking today at identifying uh, your target audience. Who is your target audience? <clears throat> now, this is a question that I really want you to take the time and ask yourself and look deep within yourself, look deep within your products and really ask yourself, who is this? Who is your target audience? We often talk about brand relevance and equally important is you knowing who is your target audience. Now, there is a misunderstanding. There's a missed uh, information out there. There's a misbelief that every single person is your consumer. Doing business is not like that, all right? Your business coach, business advisors, um, marketing expert, branded and marketing supporters, they are the one that should educate you on this. In the absence of you don't have this information yourself. Now, Let's take, for example, your target audience can be called the corporate community. And even in the corporate community, you can segmentalize which segment of the business community you're going to be servicing. Like, for example, you might be dealing with agricultural and products. You might be dealing with uh, car parts, um, you might be dealing with corporate financing. These are all different portfolios to serve the corporate community. You need to know this. And this is absolutely necessary for you to understand this. You might, another alternative you might say is that you're, you're targeting women because women has specific exclusive needs. Again, you might want to say you're targeting male because you want to target a specific type of a male. You want to target the males in the corporate community, which is different from the male who are going to be the big sporty type. On the other hand, another example, you might want to say you're targeting children because children has special needs. They have needs for education. They have needs for textbooks. They have needs for pets and pencils. They have needs for all of these things, all right? So it's important for you in starting a business to ask yourself who is or are your target market. And in asking yourself this, everything that we talked about yesterday must be applied to this. For example, your market size, your market density, your market dispersion. Why? Because it is only by doing this you can determine the viability of doing business with the specific target audience. So step one here, ask yourself who is or are your target market and make sure that you truly understand why you are selecting a particular demographic, a particular target group to provide products or service to. So in developing your value proposition, your value proposition must be aligned to this specific target market. And let's look at this a little bit more. So the first concepts we look at is who is your target audience? The second concept that we're going to look at today is 
how to identify your target audience needs. So step one is identifying who is your target market. Step two is for you to really get some skin in the game and ask yourself, what are your target market needs? Let's, let's take, for example, you're targeting the business community. You want to ask yourself, what is or are the needs, wants, and expectations of the people that I want to target with my products and services? You need to get enough skill in the game to know this. And before you even develop your value proposition, take the time out to get this information. All of this is part of the research. All of this is part of getting skin in the game to really understand who you are targeting and to really understand what are their needs and their wants and their expectations. All right. So let's examine this further. You're targeting the business community and you normally ask yourself, what are their needs? What are some of the needs of the business community? Some of the needs that we have researched might be access to capital and better interest rate. So that's one challenge that they have, all right? Your value proposition, remember, is going to be about adding value and fixing problems. Your value proposition can have internal impact and external impact. So we look, one of the challenges that the business community has here is access to capital at better interest rates. So that immediately is a challenge. So now you know that this is one of your challenges. So you take it off as one challenge for the market that you're going to be targeting. What could be another challenge? Access to markets and increased market share. Many startup businesses has tremendous challenge with access to market. The market that you may be in might be hostile, might not be accommodating, and might not be enabling for many reasons. There might be political issues, there might be economic issues, there might be racial issues, and all of these things can influence how your business and your brand position itself in the market. Yes, I did say racism can also influence that process particularly when it's going to come from organization that has tremendous influence that can literally try to marginalize you and bar you from making breakthrough in the market. So it's important for you to understand all of these realities in your market research. So access to working capital at better interest rate is one of the challenges of the market of the target market that you intend to serve. The other one is access to markets, all right? Access to markets to increase market share. And I did tell you some of the reasons why access to market might be difficult. In you developing your value proposition, your value proposition must be able to one, speak to, limited capital must be able to speak to market access and increase market share. So your value proposition, and we're gonna look at this some more just now, must be able to address every single issue your potential client or client is gonna be going through. We're gonna examine that some more just now. What are some other challenges that businesses can go through? You have absenteeism and underproductivity. That's a major challenge for business because you have absenteeism and perhaps when they are not absent, they are not performing the way you expect them to perform. So that's a problem that your target market is going through. And you want to know all of this. You want to know why there is absenteeism, why there is underperformance. 
The reason you want to know all of this is that when you build in your value proposition, your value proposition must be able to speak to these issues. And I'm going to give you some practical examples just now. The other thing that you may have is not only absenteeism, but you have in staff turnover and capital flight. Absenteeism, um, staff turnover and capital flight. Now, what exactly does absenteeism, or sorry, staff turnover has to do with capital flight? Are you aware that how much money is spent annually invested in human resource development? A whole lot. And when those human resources switched from your organization to another entity, another organization, that's a loss of capital. It is a loss of capital. So in building your value proposition, your value proposition must not only see that as a problem, but you must see the solution. What is the solution to turnover, absenteeism, and access to market, and access to capital, you must be able to bring those solutions in your value proposition. All right, so the first thing that we begin by looking at is who is your target audience? The second things that we look at here today is what are the needs, wants, and expectations of your target audience? Now you know this. The third element that we're going to go to is how to align the value proposition to the market that you're going to be targeting. And of course, I said, identify the problems. So one of the problems that we look at is access to capital and better interest rates for capital. In developing your value proposition, which is your business being set up to add value, fix problems, to be able to make impact to the organization at the internal level and the external level. You want to know those problems and the value prop proposition is going to be the solution to those problems. So one of the solution to capital, as we just looked at capital, can be international capital, at lower interest rate. Depending on where you are in the world, capital can be very high. And part of your business solution, part of your business proposition, uh, your value proposition for startup entrepreneurs or even big businesses can be to bring capital to the market at a much lower cost. That is a unique selling proposition. So this is how you can literally build your value proposition. It is based on doing critical market analysis, understanding the needs, wants, and expectations of your target market, and building out your value proposition to be able to speak to those needs and those wants and those expectations. One of the solutions, which is a value proposition, is for you to say, my company, my entity, provide working capital at significantly lower interest rates. That definitely will pique the attention of the specific target audience. So these are things for you to look at and we will work with you on a deeper level to really help you to get your value proposition right. What's another example? There's something that we call collaborative capital. And collaborative ca capital not only come, may not only come at low interest rates, but the possibility exists. It may come at zero interest rate. Collaborative capital. At Venture Capital Inc., Global Branding and Marketing, we are developing these unique financial models and financial systems. And we are communicating these concepts with our clients um, in North America and other parts of the world, because these are very innovative approaches. These are innovative value proposition that many businesses are in dire need of. So reach out to us in the event you need to learn more. 
more about the financial capital system than so collaborative capital can be your value proposition. Instead of paying a high interest rate or a low interest rate, learn what collaborative capital is and pay zero interest rate. That's a unique value proposition. The other possibilities that you can look at here is what we're going to call smart capital leverage capitalization. Smart capital capitalization. That's again is another uh, unique way in which you can raise or help the, your specific target group to understand your value proposition you can help them to raise smart capital again very low or zero interest rates that the capital that they much needed to scale their business to a whole another level. So your value proposition is the solution. You want your value proposition to be 101 aligned to the problems and the solution that businesses, your specific target group, are experiencing. All right, and you want to be very, very good in your value proposition. Now, you don't want to just develop a value proposition and say that this is what you're doing and then you are not capable, fully capable of doing it. You want to build this out properly. Sometimes you may need the professional advice, mentorship, coaching to really help you to get that right. I want you to reach out to us at Venture Capital Fund, Global Branding and Marketing. We have a team of subject matter here and to work with you. Now, we also talk about access to markets, and that's a problem for many startup businesses, for many businesses. And we have seen in developed economies and developing economies what market forces can do. All right? Market forces and cut short competition can do a whole lot to keep a brand out of the market. Yes, it can. Don't be naive. It's a fact. It can. Political climate um, can prevent a brand from scaling. Economic systems can prevent a brand from scaling. Um, institutional racism can prevent a brand from scaling or ethnic of, of people from scaling. All of these things are some of the reasons why we continue to say it's important to do your SWOT analysis, but it's also important to do your PES analysis so you understand economic and political realities, economic realities, social realities, and technological realities that literally influence your business. So your value proposition, when your value proposition is coming to the table, your value proposition could say, we can fix those problems and we can ensure that you get a cut of the market. All right, your value proposition must be able to speak to that. So if there is political realities, you may be able to change it. If there's systematic racism uh, and favoritism within an organization where institutions that are set up to move businesses forward, may show favoritism to a particular ethnic group and particular people, perhaps you might have the skill set to say, calm that down. Collective development and collective interest is the way forward in the interest of national development. You might be the skilled negotiator in your value proposition to speak to these issues in a very diplomatic and fair way to ensure that you know everybody wants to come on board in the interest of collective human development your value proposition and you may have the skill set to make this happen but i'm saying don't be naive because business again is a very cutthroat environment it's a very vicious cycle it took me many years um, to accept it, not to learn it. I have learned these systems over 20 years at 
while I study at universities. Never wanted to accept it, but it's the reality in doing business. And we can share some of those experiences with you. We can help you to avoid some of those pitfalls as you set yourself up to scale your business, your ideas, your brand with local, regional, and international relevance. All right, so you're bringing solutions. Some of the solution, you can form another organization that might say access to market intelligence unit. And your access to market intelligence unit, which is your value proposition. So immediately people access to market intelligence unit. Wow, I want to hear more about that. And then you start to communicate your value proposition. Your value proposition, you have people who are trained to communicate with government and engage with government agencies to affect policy change. You have people who are trained to engage with organizations, private sector bodies to influence um, fair play and equal access to market opportunities and bring down favoritism. You might, again, you might have the skill set to make this happen. You know, access, market access intelligence unit. The access market intelligence unit may have these particular skill sets um, to speak to these issues and can give your brand the kind of representation that is needed to integrate in the market without undue and unfair processes. Possibility, your value proposition can speak to the issues that so many business startups and businesses are facing today. Another element to this access to market is not just access to local market, where the market intelligent, market access intelligence unit can deal with. You have export market intelligence. So you have now an export market intelligence unit that has the negotiation capabilities to negotiate for market access across borders. That's a value proposition. All right, so you understand your target market, understand your, part, your target market needs, they want to access markets. So here is where we develop the export market intelligence unit designed to negotiate access to international market for small, medium, and large scale businesses. That's a value proposition. So, Again, you don't want to build your value proposition putting the cart in front of the horse. It's not going to move, not the way it's supposed to be moving. You want to put the horse in front of the cart, strap the cart in, and the horse is going to move the whole process forward. In other words, what I'm saying, invest the time, the talent, and the resources to really understand who you're targeting understand their needs and their wants and their expectations. And in understanding their needs, wants, and expectations, you build your value proposition to address those needs and those wants and those expectations. Here is where you know that you know that you're on point, 101%, building your brand to speak to the corporate needs, internal needs and external needs, all right? so. The last point I'm gonna look at here is what we're gonna call a corporate cash flow maximization and staff motivation thesis. And this has to speak to the issue of what I talked about earlier. You have absenteeism and you have staff turnover. And that's a problem that hundreds of thousands and millions of companies across the world fail. It's a viable market based on the analysis. But how can you reduce absenteeism and come very close to eliminating staff turnover, where you spend companies spend hundreds of thousands, millions, and perhaps billions of dollars collectively investing in those resources? How can you reverse that? Perhaps you might want to build something that we call um, corporate cash flow maximization and staff motivation thesis. And what this does is speak to two issues, how to keep the staff highly motivated and 
To keep the staff highly motivated is not only based on their mental health, it's not only based on their physical health, it's also on their emotional health. And their emotional health is tied to a number of physical realities. And your corporate culture, your value proposition is speaking to these, these issues. So you're helping the corporate manager to understand that to reduce absenteeism, you have to look beyond salaries. You have to look beyond mental health. You have to start to incorporate new elements within your corporate culture. You have to redesign your corporate culture. Your corporate culture has to be able to speak to the needs and wants and expectations of the human resource. With that, you're gonna get peak performance, you're gonna get staff loyalty, you're gonna get increase in productivity, increase in profit, scaling of your business with local, regional, and international relevance. You're gonna get a significant reduction in staff turnover. Perhaps your value proposition speak to these issues because it's a big problem within the corporate community across the world. So again, there's a right and wrong way to build your value proposition. And I trust that the information that I've given you today at least has helped you in some way in knowing how to build your value proposition if you have not got it right as yet. Your value proposition is not about your ego. Your value proposition, it's about you understanding people's needs, wants, and expectations, and you building your brand to be able to speak to those needs, wants, and expectations of your consumers. I'm going to pull the curtain down on this today, but there's going to be a second phase to value proposition where we're going to be going much deeper into what your value proposition should represent in the interest of ensuring that you it have the right impact, you have to stay in power with it, and you literally build your value proposition out into something that you can call purpose. All right. So I trust that you would have enjoyed this program today. Remember, if you find the information interesting, I want to encourage you to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to this program just below the screen on YouTube. Um, you have that subscription button, just click it and press the bell so you will get notification every time you bring up um, one of these content. Again, um, I want to say that at our mission is to position, um, and that mission, the mission of Global Branding and Marketing Venture Capital Fund, uh, Venture Capital Inc. Our mission is to position our clients, employees, and strategic partners to understand, create, and leverage passive income cash flow, build multiple streams of income, leverage smart investment strategies in order to build generational and intergenerational wealth. In our programs, you will learn about financial literacy and the commercial financial sector, financial intelligence in the commercial financial sector, financial intelligence in smart capital market, and financial intelligence for sustainable livelihood. Most importantly, you will learn that financial intelligence goes beyond your ability to make money and maximize your disposable income. It addresses the issue of understanding the global financial system and leveraging this intelligence to create good debt cash flow, minimize the existing debt financial portfolio while maximizing financial and equity capital gain. The understanding of the commercial financial sector, investment financial sector, and smart capital market are an important body of knowledge for you to have in the global landscape of financial intelligence. I want to encourage you to reach out to us at Venture Capital Inc., Venture Capital Fund, Global Branding and Marketing. We have a team of subject matter experts with over 75 years of experience that are here willing to prepare to move your business and your brand to a whole nother level. We have a team of PFAs, professional financial advisors, personal financials, 
financial advisor. We have a team of economists, a team of accountants, a team of business consultants. The beauty of what we do, we provide training. We also provide mentorship and coaching, but we provide the technical support where we literally hold your hands, walk with you through the valley of your business success and do everything that we can do to ensure that you can fast track your business development cycle. Feel free to reach out to us for a free consultation. We're excited to talk with you from anywhere in the world that you're at. We are here and available to talk with you. My name is Gary Thompson. I'm a business development consultant by profession. I'm a humanitarian by nature, and I'm the multiple best-selling author for seven books, including Billionaire Codes and Managers to Get. These two books, you can find them on our sister company website, which is www.megamoneygy.com. Log into that site, navigate the front page, and you will be able to see these books. You can make purchase online anywhere in the world. You can also subscribe to that website, so you will get all the videos and all the contents that we are producing on a daily basis. Along with this, you can navigate shopping, Look at the drop down and you will see a range of different training programs that we are offering. Very soon I will be telling you more about what we call affiliate marketing and franchise managers. We want to have affiliate marketing, marketers, franchise managers from across the world. So keep following this program and we will be introducing you wherever you are in the world to an opportunity to be your own boss and an opportunity to cash flow maximize from your own home. All right, so I trust you would have enjoyed. I want to thank you for taking the time out for being with us today. It has been such a pleasure being with you. And look how I'm excited about being with you tomorrow. So be blessed and see you on the other side.